Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Uh, selamat sejahtera semua. So, alhamdulillah kita dah uh, come back daripada kita pun cuti semester and so that I hope that everybody semua berada dalam keadaan yang sihat walafiat. So, for this week saya akan uh, continue with the next chapter for this course iaitu knowledge organization and corporate taxonomy. So for today we are going to cover topics about taxonomy and classification. Uh, you can access your slides, the other reference material uh, by the Google Classroom or you can also access from the new feature. Okay, for this week, we are going to cover topics related to taxonomy and classification, uh, which is, um, it consists of um, two main topics, uh, which are taxonomy and classification market analysis, uh, consists of the methodology and assessing the current situation. And the second one is about the taxonomy and classification technology. Why taxonomy? Why do we need this taxonomy? This taxonomy actually is a tool to overcome the information overload. Kita ada terlalu banyak maklumat, kita ada terlalu banyak information so that we need to know how to organize, to classify, to restore the, um, to store the, all the information. It is also distributed content creation and storage. We can spend less time looking and publishing but more time in discovering the documents and information. This taxonomy actually going to be um, effective coordination of organization information through the unification of the vocabularies. Uh, okay, itu which is the vocabularies ataupun dalam bracket ni we known as a taxonomies. Use through the organization. It is a non-existent or inconsistence of metadata. An important way of helping uh, organization structures via information resource sharing. We are well known that in an organization, ada pelbagai information resources. Contoh yang saya boleh bagi kalau you tengok dekat uh, pengurusan uh, sesebuah uh, library, they have um, kata various types of services, information and resources also facilities. So they they they, they, they need a way ataupun orang kata um, cara bagaimana all this information and information resources be able to access by all the user. Dia macam orang kata useless kalau kita ada maklumat tersebut tapi kita tidak boleh uh, gunakan. Okay. Sekejap ya. So for this corporate taxonomy and classification, we to continue our discussion about the classification. And okay, this is the three topics that we are going to cover and explore, which is in include uh, taxonomy and findability. Uh, this findability uh, concern about retrieval uh, macam tadi I mentioned. Uh, macam mana kita nak cari balik maklumat so it's about retrieval and storage in the library management especially. Retrieval ni selalunya akan ada kaitan dengan findability. 
because of the nature corporate of organization tend to use a catchy and glamour terms okay so that mereka menggunakan pemahaman findability for retrieval of the knowledge asset in a corporate world and then we will discuss also about taxonomy for content management uh, for this we will discuss about the knowledge framework uh, there are few companies uh, ataupun uh, street knowledge ataupun lens framework ada beberapa filosofi yang kita akan uh, explore and discuss uh, dia ada uh, contoh macam sophos logos ethos uh, falsafah greek yang kita gunakan to discuss about the content management uh, dan yang ketiga is taxonomies and knowledge management we are going to see what is the relation between taxonomy and also knowledge management kalau ada masa kita tengok on the construction of the taxonomies okay kita pergi pada um, We are going to explore taxonomy and findability or retrieval. So knowledge model such as taxonomy are often used to retrieve information or to retrieve knowledge asset, especially in corporate or business uh, organization. It is for making knowledge easier to find. Contohnya macam uh, perpustakaan tadi, the libraries macam mana retrieval system uh, retrieval storage dilakukan tapi this one in the business and corporate world kita gunakan term findability uh, the concept of uh, findability and retrieval ni sebenarnya sama macam mana pencarian maklumat atau pendapatan semula maklumat dengan perpustakaan. Uh, bezanya corporate uh, ni dia tends to look for kata asset. Uh, macam mana dia nak uh, kata search on dia experience, uh, expertise yang ada uh, uh, ber ber berkaitan dengan this uh, knowledge asset yang berkaitan dengan tacit and also explicit uh, knowledge. dia punya searching and retrieval tu uh, a bit different dengan uh, yang selalu kita gunakan di uh, perpustakaan okay for the retrieval so the taxonomy application in business processes affects different groups of stakeholder in different ways uh, therefore searching strategies ni ataupun retrieval strategies is orang kata might be different depends on the uh, nature of the organization and also the stakeholders uh, contohnya kalau uh, investor uh, dia menggunakan orang kata uh, apa, industri tekstil dia punya cara pencarian dia tu berbeza dia takkan nak pergi ke library nak guna kita punya library management system to look for all those things but they have dia uh, dia own tools ataupun dia punya model sendiri ataupun they, they are going to go to the uh, related organization related to this uh, textile, uh, textile and manufacturers punya ni ataupun dia pergi ke matriks uh, to look for the information uh, dia tak bolehlah gunakan resources yang yang available dekat uh, perpustakaan
Jadi mereka ni akan menggunakan different types of engine to identify information that they would like to retrieve. Okay. Apa target audience ni? Uh, for the um, taxonomy dalam konteks of uh, findability. There are four segment uh, related okay in this uh, activity of the findability. Yang pertama of course end user. Customers, uh, citizens, uh, orang kata users yang menggunakan. Uh, they have relevant information flowing to them with less effort. Contohnya, um, from the website for example, bagaimana pencarian tu dibuat? Adakah mudah untuk dinavigasi, untuk di uh, browse, to search for, uh, ataupun uh, maklumat tu mungkin ada dalam web, tetapi due to the complexity of the navigation, uh, sometimes the user di or kata fail to to access, to look for the uh, maklumat needed. Okay. Uh, It is due to the orang kata complexity, cara penyusunan mereka tu yang uh, kompleks. Kedua, workers executing the process. Uh, okay. The focus shift from managing the logistics of the process towards the knowledge intensive task is almost involved finding relevant information. Uh, bergantung kepada the culture uh, berkenaan company tersebut iaitu internal policy, internal standard bagaimana sesebuah department ataupun organisation tu dia mempunyai maklumat tetapi not being shared with the others yang dalam that organisation. Uh, maknanya macam contohnya maklumat tu tidak dikongsikan dengan dengan departemen yang lain. Jadi benda tu the belonging hanya kepada mereka. Maknanya uh, whoever yang search katalah kita sendiri employee, kita gagal mendapatkan maklumat tersebut kita tak tak sure siapa yang simpan, siapa yang organize. Okay. Especially in the area of research uh, development. Okay. Kadang-kadang dia orang ni tend to simpan sendiri contohnya macam bahagian bahagian finance, bahagian acquisition, bahagian research and development, bahagian resources, mereka simpan the 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 kata maklumat tu secara stand alone so that uh, other department not be able to access dan juga tak boleh nak gunakan maklumat tersebut. Benda ni bukan sahaja happen uh, di orang kata uh, di perpustakaan tetapi juga di uh, di other uh, organisation and departments. Uh, okay. Baik. Um, next. The managers. So managers responsible for the result. Strategy formation and primary processes execution inform each other more directly. Uh, macam yang kita kata tu, kata just now dia berkaitan dengan um, policy of that organization. Uh, bergantung pada policy dia, uh, standard dia, strategi organisasi tu macam mana. Uh, Adakah mereka uh, kata ada certain rules yang ditetapkan untuk apa apa, apa untuk untuk pendedahan atau maklumat yang digunakan? 
Uh, jadi more, most of it, the strategy actually is to protect the information ataupun the document ataupun the output, the the the, the important information dekat situ dengan uh, yang lain. Jadi benda tu orang kata uh, it, it can be used by other researchers. Jadi susah lah kan. Uh. And then number four, um, the IT department getting from business needs, legislation and policies to an ergonomic effective system that is resilient to change is a fundamental uh, knowledge management challenge. Dia memudahkan uh, penghasilan orang kata retrieval uh, maklumat tu through the website dan sebagainya. So the, itu dia punya roles and responsibility. Uh, jadi mungkin ada policy tertentu dia terapkan apabila kita do the update about the website dan sebagainya. Uh, jadi uh, mungkin uh, sebulan sekali, twice a year, it depends pada the policy. So jadi IT department um, should establish the the flexible uh, the flexible and effective policy so that uh, the findability of uh, the findability concept of uh, information uh, kata uh, daripada website ni uh, ataupun intranet ni lebih uh, kata efficient lah. So the concept of findability should clearly understandable signs. Uh, yeah, it should can be, they really can be used and understandable signs can be important. Okay. So findability ni, uh, term ni, uh, uh, kata by uh, Peter, P E T E R, M O R, Peter Mobile, regarding uh, menulis berkenaan the concept of a findability. Uh, dalam tahun 2002, you all boleh try to lihat dia punya ni. Dia uh, menceritakan berkenaan dengan designing system yang uh, membantu people uh, kata help mereka dalam uh, membantu mereka dalam pencarian maklumat. So the, the, the concept of retrieval ada di situ. So this information uh, retrieval ni lebih tradisional sebenarnya. Dia punya te, uh, terminologi ni being used uh, information retrieval ni mainly used digunakan pada uh, yang terarah macam all the libraries and resource center. While findability ni uh, mainly used digunakan in the business and corporate world. Jadi dia punya uh, dictionary itu berbeza lah between the uh, culture atau background of the uh, organisation. Walaupun sebenarnya both tu sebenarnya tujuan dia mencari, ialah untuk mencari maklumat. Hmm. Dalam banyak cases sebenarnya benda ni tak apply well because uh, some of it dalam organisasi especially corporate, uh, the findability of the whatever resources yang diperlukan tu sukar untuk dilakukan. Uh, Contohnya macam uh, orang kata saya bagi dekat shopping centre, bagaimana kita nak mencari ataupun nak, nak gunakan surau macam mana cara nak mencari takkan kita nak gunakan perkataan retrievals uh, sebab dia dia dia, dia tak sesuai so uh, dia lebih go for the orang kata the terms of findability uh, so in in dalam corporate world ni surau uh, prayer room 
is part of knowledge asset as well. Jadi lebih sesuai kita gunakan dia uh, terms of findability instead of uh, perkataan information retrieval. Sebab information retrieval tu referring kepada uh, memanglah you mencari maklumat tetapi kepada the information asset yang ada di uh, perpustakaan. Kita kita di, di business world ni kita find. Dia bukan retrieve. Ha, macam contoh takkan you nak retrieve toilet. Takkan you nak cari surau. Of course lah kita gunakan perkataan find. Findability. That's why dia perkataan ni memang digunakan dalam uh, business contact ataupun uh, corporate concept. Uh, findability also tidak digunakan dalam uh, content. Uh, macam retriever, dia lebih banyak kita gunakan untuk mencari uh, information, content management dan sebagainya. Okay. Uh, you nak cari komputer, you nak cari server, kita gunakan konsep of findability. Uh, and then macam contohnya, if effective of the signage yang 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 ada uh, dalam di di orang kata di corporate world ataupun geographical uh, location um, of the tourist punya tempat of course kita akan gunakan signage ha, kan uh, macam contohnya bila dalam all the business unit dalam organizations uh, also kita need to apply the signage process. So, dia lebih sesuai dengan uh, the concepts of uh, findability. Okay, saya harap uh, you all boleh bezakan ya between the findability and also information uh, retrieval. Now, uh, kita proceed with the taxonomy and content management. So, in practice, taxonomy can be expressed in many different ways. For example, in paper filing systems secara manual, in shared drive folder structures, in contohnya Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, Google Classroom, New Future, okay, contoh-contoh dia. The findability of the... Um, Uh, file yang kita nak ni, you masukkan add file numbering system, ada penyusunan metadata pada website, uh, database, online databases dan sebagainya. Uh, in file numbering system, in site structures, in metadata. Uh, okay. Taxonomy were associated primarily with improving the findability of content in large repositories. In conclusion, uh, mainly taxonomy ni uh, digunakan uh, for findability of knowledge as said in large or okay, the concept. So, rules of taxonomy more on the findability, which is the ability to retrieve the right information on the web for business decision. Because business asset ni ada dekat mana-mana. So, it's also related to navigational powers of CPI interface, uh, information architecture, user interface design and search engine optimization, which is SEO. Okay. Jadi contohnya maklumat tu mungkin ada dalam poster, ada dalam cara kerja manusia, you need to capture, kena classify, masukkan je dalam satu repository system. Uh, okay, so that uh, easy for the user and user tu tu uh, dapatkan semula uh, maklumat tersebut. Tapi dalam bentuk repository lah. So large volumes of content going into repositories can no longer be handled by limited numbers of a professional classifier. 
So the flow of content in the business activity is actually besar sebenarnya. Uh, user, customers, uh, kena decide lah what category uh, to use, to explore when it comes to the findability or retrieval process tadi. Uh, you kena lihat, you mak tengok tentang uh, which category, uh, expertise yang mana. Okay, uh, ataupun research interest of staff dia macam mana, kat mana dia kita nak cari um, instead of kita just gunakan the, the apa, company operator ataupun dia uh, ni, ataupun penggunaan dalam website ataupun repository ataupun ni uh, adalah kaedah yang mereka menggunakan untuk to look for all this. Okay. Sama kalau um, part of the rules of um, kata uh, taxonomy is selain daripada findability, kita boleh lihat juga dalam bentuk structure and organize. Sebagai uh, contohnya uh, dalam kata uh, people, products, brands, uh, information and knowledge, uh, profession, uh, ataupun work type, banking, customers groups, organization, structure. Uh, there is orang kata um, role of corporate taxonomy in uh, part of dalam information architecture. Uh, jadi kalau people tu, uh, kita kita boleh lihat dia punya class macam contohnya sebagai uh, interest, hobby, the qualification, income, agreed, uh, uh, sorry, uh, income, age and also uh, gender. And then for the organizational structure, uh, kita boleh lihat the pembahagian tu ataupun the class uh, ataupun the categories is from the human resource, uh, finance, uh, marketing and sales, advertising, uh, product development, uh, and then research and development, okay, uh, dan sebagainya. That one is under the organizational uh, structure. Well, for macam contoh lain seperti banks and banking, kita boleh lihat the, the classification ataupun the categorization is from orang kata you, you nak, uh, ni dia daripada aspect macam Islamic banking, ada corporate banking, ada personal loan, ada customers group, ada uh, private banking dan sebagainya. Okay. So most of it, role of this taxonomy actually to help establish common ground which is a highly localized uh, private language uh, versus the common ground ni. Uh, are, most, are more user friendly especially uh, untuk orang kata penggunaan in public domains portal. Okay. And then it shows the explicitly public organizational memory structure and show relationship between concept with the entire domain. Uh, slide daripada itu is also to help in sense uh, making and provide salience. For example, uh, putting the important aspect first uh, and then leaving behind the less important. Okay. And then lagi uh, kita distribute content to appropriate parties ataupun uh, domain pekerjaan. Contohnya uh, kita select item fit for particular purpose yang tertentu. And then uh, some more it's to help increase the awareness in both risk and opportunities. Uh, the cost during the characterization uh, processes of the taxonomy uh, different kinds of risk must be identified and group between all the knowledge uh, domain. So this uh, role of taxonomy, <coughs> actually, this taxonomy act as a boundary uh, object. Iaitu, um, it forms a common frame of a reference for two or more distant communities. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, alright. Dan kita pergi seterusnya. Sekejap. Taxonomy ni dilihat sebagai primary aids lah. Uh, yang membantu kepada uh, uh, kata definability of the context of um, information assets <coughs> especially at the years 1995 bila berlaku ledakan uh, maklumat dalam pelbagai sektor Selepas tahun 2000, the awareness of the taxonomy ni digunakan secara meluas. Okay. Uh, dia lebih banyak digunakan after year 2000 when people uh, ataupun corporate world ni, masyarakat corporate ni uh, acknowledge the uh, the, the, the existence of this uh, taxonomy. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, it, all this sebenarnya kita boleh tengok dalam banyak conference, uh, publication, writing, uh, write up related to the uh, taxonomy. Uh, you all boleh tengok uh, penulisan berkaitan taxonomy ni dia banyak ataupun sekitar tahun 2000 ke atas dalam jurnal, proceeding dan okay. okay, taxonomies and KM. To discuss the relation or significance of taxonomy and KM, uh, so jom kita relatekan dia punya concept uh, knowledge lens framework. Okay. The knowledge lens framework ni uh, was developed by um, company uh, which called State Knowledge. Uh, tujuan dia, uh, the State Knowledge interviews this framework to categorize the different ways in which KM can uh, operate within the organization. Uh, dalam konteks ini, mereka meletakkan uh, sophos, ethos, logos and pathos um okay uh, dalam this framework so knowledge management implementation focus into these four types of uh, implementation uh, you nak tengok implementation tu dalam sophos ethos logos ataupun pathos uh, okay empat um, komponen ni yang utama Bila kita implement knowledge management dalam sebuah organisasi, uh, adakah kita nak menggunakan satu persatu ni ataupun kita gunakan keseluruhan. So, the vertical uh, animation, uh, dia represent, uh, okay, berkenaan Sekejap ya. So this is the knowledge lenses framework uh, related to the uh, knowledge management framework. Uh, Keempat-empat ni melibatkan communication and language of uh, knowledge. Kita lihat next slide berkenaan dengan what is knowledge lens framework ni. In knowledge management, logos represent the domains of information management. Uh, logos represent uh, information management 
of supplying the right things at the right time uh, when it is needed. Okay, there are more on words or language used in communication. So, logos, philosophy, logos ni berkaitan dengan uh, information management. So, information management dalam sebuah organisasi, dia kebanyakan mereka address logos. Berkaitan dengan pengurusan, uh, words, language, uh, in communication. Uh, communication apa? Communication of knowledge. Okay. Okay. Dalam bentuk uh, maklumat. Communication of knowledge ni dalam bentuk uh, information. Okay. Digunakan language that being uh, as to, to communicate dalam bentuk. Contohnya buku, elektronik, online databases dan sebagainya. Okay. Kedua. Sophos. Sophos represent experience, expertise and also learning activities. Okay. Uh, they are more on the wisdom or knowledge that can only be acquired by experience. Uh, contohnya, uh, macam kita ada pengalaman, kita ada kepakaran kita, kemahiran kita dan juga uh, proses learning. Okay. Uh, so, so far ni tidak boleh digunakan menggunakan kaedah information. Uh, dia orang kata wisdom, skill, kita tak boleh gunakan uh, ni. So far, you kena convertkan um, ataupun capture kita modify Uh, the experience of oh, all the experience tu baru kita classkan dia dalam logos and then seterusnya ialah pathos fellow feeling feelings or the ability to connect and engage with other people or a first level they represent collaboration Uh, and also socially distributed knowledge to mingle around with uh, other kita punya social culture okay, dalam that organization. Uh, dalam masa yang sama, you boleh collaborate, you boleh share the knowledge with others. Then seterusnya, ethos. Character, identity, style of behavior, value, reputation and practice. Ethos ini represent the character of an organization. Ataupun perkataan lain yang mudah, culture of that organization. Culture of the department. Sejarah dia macam mana, strategic direction dia bagaimana. Berkenaan dengan the department ataupun unit. Ethos ni character ataupun identity of the organization. Okay. So knowledge knowledge lens framework ni is a framework uh, being used in implementing knowledge management for an organization. Uh, you nak address yang mana? You nak gunakan uh, logos, sophos, pathos or ethos. Jadi, this is yang orang kata inisiatif lah dalam sebuah organisasi. Kalau contohnya macam knowledge sharing, which is part of knowledge management. Uh, kalau knowledge sharing, kita letakkan di bawah mana? Ada logos, uh, sophos, fatos ataupun ethos. Kat mana agaknya knowledge sharing? Yang knowledge sharing ada orang oh, kata ada 
ethos. Okay, because kita create the culture dulu uh, and then then only kita boleh uh, kita kita perlukan platform. Jadi per, kita perlu implement the ethos framework concept. Okay, perlu dijadikan budaya of knowledge sharing. Okay, contohnya lah. Okay. So banyak lah kita nak apa, you all kena lihat betul-betul berkenaan dengan knowledge and frameworks ni. Okay, what steps Salomis do? Uh. Okay. Uh, apa yang taxonomy can do dalam uh, sesuatu organisasi? Then this taxonomy can structures and organize. Uh, okay. The taxonomy ni organize things. Um, contohnya macam biology species into the relationship with uh, orang kata super ordinate concept yang lain-lain such as family, genetic, uh, and species. Uh, and then, dia berkaitan juga dengan works and also resources in uh, organization. So the taxonomy also help to establish common ground, okay? And then taxonomy can also help uh, span boundaries between the group. Taxonomy can help in sense of making. And then taxonomy can aid the discovery, in the discovery of risk and opportunity. Uh, okay, jadi kita kat situ kita boleh lihat what taxonomy do. You all, sebenarnya all this taxonomy di banyak di, digunakan digunakan di, di banyak uh, organisation, business and corporate culture. Okay, dia boleh digunakan banyak benda ni bukan sahaja digunakan uh, orang kata dalam per, per, pengatur cara, bukan pengatur cara ada how to say, pengorganisasian maklumat saja tetapi uh, we can also menggunakan knowledge asset yang lain uh, bagaimana kita nak setkan all the the, the, the group okay Kemudian ada juga uh, kata uh, bioinformatik which is orang kata ada pelbagai bidang yang menggunakan dalam area banking uh, macam tadi saya bagi tahu dekat banks and banking kita ada islamic banking we do have corporate banking ada customers groups, ada personal loan, ada ada bankruptcy, bankruptcy, ada private banking, ada so di apa bagai orang kata ada apa bagai uh, uh, orang kata perbahagian kumpulan. Uh, taxonomy helps to establish eh, to establish common ground. Um, kita localized private language and also taxonomy. Uh, maknanya kita establish our common language using these taxonomies. Common language ni um, sebagai satu bahasa 
ataupun apa ya um, term yang kita merujuk kepada sam istilah Uh, yang tertentu yang diguna pakai oleh organisasi atau sektor tersebut contohnya macam jaga-jaga yang tertentu uh, contohnya perkataan knowledge management sendiri asalnya uh, digunakan dalam information management uh, tapi today the term of knowledge management ni uh, dah digunakan secara wide uh, uh, macam metadata first being introduced dalam library and management tapi sekarang banyak dah elektronik punya ni uh, archiving pun menggunakan uh, metadata. Okay and then uh, taxonomy can help span boundaries between groups. Okay. Dia ada orang kata two or more communities. Uh, uh, kata dia contohnya macam uh, okay. a pharmaceutical uh, drug dia ada pharmacies, dia ada doctors, dia ada hospital, uh, dia ada boundaries, dia create kan dekat situ tapi dia link dengan hospital uh, boundaries tu dia link dengan uh, agencies uh, kan ahli farmasi yang menghasilkan tetapi penggunanya melibatkan uh, pelbagai sektor lah. Uh, depend depend on the sectors yang yang terlibat lah. Uh, contohnya macam uh, hospital dan sebagainya. Okay. Kalau boundaries objects, contohnya on the central uh, function, uh, contohnya mitis uh, division, dia ada pelbagai lagi uh, dia punya sub kepada ataupun link kepada foreign investor, uh, labor office, land authority, ada local investor, ada national bank kat situ, ada industries. So dia melibatkan, it forms a common frame of uh, reference for two or more distant communities. Uh, dia ada banyak central function tu ada uh, pelbagai. That is related to the uh, taxonomy acts as a boundary objects. Okay. There are pelbagai types of taxonomy sebenarnya kalau kita lihat. Because form of taxonomy ni ada various. Uh, ada macam dalam pelbagai lah dia punya dia representing dalam pelbagai bentuk. Hmm. E um, taxonomy pun sekarang ni kita tengok dah ada banyak the success innovation and research development dalam innovate produk dalam pelbagai kategori macam contoh apa uh, tadi saya kata form of taxonomy ni ada various ways of representing taxonomies dalam the list, trees, family trees uh, hierarchies uh, matrices uh, facets, system maps dan sebagainya For us to discover risk and opportunity, kita memerlukan uh, invention, research, development ataupun kita 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 kita, kita kaji lah maknanya benda, benda tu boleh membantu untuk future uh, kata, the prediction pada masa akan datang uh, kan contohnya macam dalam COVID ni bagaimana digital humanities digunakan 
dengan sangat luas. Ha. Dulu orang kata segelintir sahaja yang guna. Bila we are talking about e-commerce, hanya segelintir sahaja yang orang kata menggunakan the concept of e-commerce ataupun electronic transaction kan. Uh, tetapi disebabkan oleh COVID, uh, kita today telah dipaksa untuk lebih bersifat digital humanities. Kita bersosial, kita berkomunikasi menggunakan uh, digital punya platform. Uh, jadi digital humanities ni berperanan macam tu to overcome, to discover ataupun the to aid, to discovery, to explore the risk and opportunity uh, in digital humanities. Uh. Contohnya sekarang lah kita punya online class Open distance learning class uh, You uh, selesa ke tak selesa But we are being forced by the environment uh, To use this method uh, Untuk kata menjaga the safetyness dan sebagainya uh, uh, Pada satu peringkat kadang-kadang ianya menyebabkan risiko ada satu certain uh, level lah. Jadi risiko pada satu level akan ada orang kata risiko. Risiko ni dalam pelbagai konsep lah. For those yang dia rasa dia not be able to do the uh, the online distance learning. Mereka mungkin have to menarik diri dan sebagainya. But uh, for some Uh, orang kata group Mereka melihat benda ni sebagai satu peluang Yang mana uh, They are more comfortable Instead of the face to face Dia lebih suka secara uh, Atas talian uh, Peluang yang orang kata Opportunities yang Lebih Orang kata uh, Peluang lah untuk, untuk digunakan Ataupun macam tu, contohnya macam kalau RIS tu ada some program yang mana kalau you nak masuk IPTA, you kena attend interview. Tapi with you due to the COVID, you tak boleh dah nak attend for the interview dan sebagainya. Okay. Uh, so sekarang dah tak ada interview. Jadi jadi peluang lah kepada mereka untuk memohon kepada program-program yang asalnya ada interview dan sebagainya previously. Jadi ini peluanglah bagi pelajar. Uh, walaupun ada yang withdraw, tapi ramai juga yang uh, mengambil baik tentang this uh, area. Construction of taxonomies ni, uh, ni adalah latihan. You all lihat bagaimana hierarchy, subordinate, subordinate, subordinate ataupun subdomain ataupun element this is the exercise find the subordinate word amongst these related words uh, syllabus computers teaching practice education nah ada empat exercise dekat sini Apa agaknya domain uh, yang boleh dihasilkan daripada perkataan perkataan ini. Uh, same goes to here lah. Apa yang boleh kita hasilkan uh, kat sini. Begitu juga nombor tiga dan juga nombor empat. So nanti kalau dah siap, you all boleh upload pada... Um, apa folder yang ada dalam Google Classroom. Okay. So that's all for today. Thank you. Assalamualaikum.